introduce you to Sophie. Now, on Saturday, Sophie will be four years old, and she's having a birthday party. And in that birthday party, there'll be a barbecue in the garden, lots of boys and girls running around, having a great time. Now, let's fast forward 20 years and think about the lives of those boys and girls when they've grown up. Because if nothing changes, and in the last 40 years in the UK, nothing's changed regarding equal pay for women, and there's still gender discrimination, if nothing changes, then Sophie's world, she'll earn 20% less. If she's lucky, it'll only be that differential, 20% less than those boys running around in her party on Saturday. She'll have less chances of reaching senior careers and being promoted. She'll be further disadvantaged if she chooses to become a mother, and unlike her male partner, she'll be further disadvantaged in terms of a salary and promotion as well. And while she's growing up from being four years old right the way through to being 20 years old, she'll constantly hear things like, oh, girls can't do maths, coding, it's just for boys. And, you know, if you do physics, you'll be the only girl in the class and you really won't like it. Now, I don't know about you, but that makes me mad as hell. So what we do is we put that emotion aside, because that's not productive, and we look at how we might change the scenario for Sophie. And then some ways forward that we've had found at Swansea University, Swansea's not perfect, but I promise you, by a long way, but some of the things we've got started are useful, and there may be things that you in your world, in your lives, and in your organizations can find some messages that you'd like to take forward to. So, what is the issue then about women in STEM? So, STEM, so all of the subjects that are within all the sciences, all technology, engineering, maths, medicine, collectively, called the STEM subjects. And the issue is, for various complex reasons, there's not enough girls studying these STEM subjects. That's issue one. Secondly, to drive our economy, we need more STEM workers. More, more, more. So we've got real shortfalls here. This is, I'm speaking now, these are global issues. It's not a Swansea issue. It's not a Welsh issue. It's not a UK issue. Global issues here. And there's a leaky pipeline and that means that girls, women, leave the STEM subject. So, as I said, some data. Too few girls study physics and computer sciences. Just narrowing now to those two subjects. They're very challenging, but the age of 16, lots of girls for the GCSEs take physics and do well, and they take areas like ICT, uh, information computing technology subjects, and again, that do pretty well. But when you get to 18 years old, when those girls are taking their A-levels, in fact, less than 10% of those that get computer science A-levels are girls, and it's less than 20% of the A-level passes are by girls. Now, they're important because those subjects are gateways into STEM careers. They're prerequisite subjects that you need to go on to very well-paid jobs. And then if you look, when women have gone into the workforce, although the workforce is over 45% women, when you look into the STEM careers, there's around 10% of women that are STEM managers in the STEM industries. There's also, of the STEM-related businesses, the people that own them, only 10% or so are women. And if we look at the FTSE 100 and all those, the companies within that, the board members are only 13% women. And as I mentioned, in order to drive our economies globally, we need particularly more engineers. And there's various reports that are showing that if we add more women into the STEM areas, in the UK, it would add £2 billion per annum. 
to the UK economy. Wow, that's a, that's a sizable sum of money. Last bit of data, I promise. The leaky pipeline, what is it? What does it mean? We hear lots about the leaky pipeline. What it is, over on the left, that's the girls versus the boys. Boys are in blue, dark line is 2007, light blue line 2013. Orange line is the girls, the heavier orange color is 2013, and 2007 is the girls line uh, for 2007. So over on the left, that's the percentages of boys and girls that are studying degrees within the science subject. So we've got around, in fact, probably more girls studying at degree level for many of the STEM subjects. But what then happens, as they're progressing through their careers, they leak away. And we don't fully understand all these areas. We need to, because this is all our talent that's been lost. So what we get is this typical scissor graph where the males who are going into the very top grades, which is the very far right plots there, it's about 80%, no difference barely between 2007 and 2013, no progress, and the women literally leaking from the pipeline. Again, this is not what is going to take us forward at all. So we need change. We need change to work in attitudes, to cultures. We look at this, we all of us, we all think, hey, we don't like that. So what can we do? What is it we can do? We also understand, because we hear about this constantly, that the most successful teams globally, the most successful teams, are those with great diversity in them, with people from who align as an LGBT, who have different ethnicities who have got different, very different socioeconomic backgrounds from different cultures, different ages. There's a lot of studies now that show that the diverse teams are the ones with the greatest economic successes. So there's benefits there uh, as well. So what is it that we can do? What works? I'm going to now run through a few things that we've been demonstrating and spreading that out to others that have been shown to work. First of all, how do you win hearts and minds? How do you get everyone on board with you so you're all facing that same way? I find one of the best ways is think about if we want to get to the top, and Swansea as a city does, Wales as a nation does, we need to use all our talent, not a tiny subsection of our workforce, of our population. So use all our talent. Let's raise the visibility of the successful women. Let's find our heroes and let's celebrate them. Let's get some strong role models and make sure that we're supporting via mentoring programs. Again, very much works. A lot of organizations are taking action to make sure that women are returning after they've had a career break. The leaks in the pipeline there when women become parents is huge. All that talent, they want to come back for various reasons, they don't feel comfortable and confident coming back. So gender equity is an issue for all of us. There's a few things that we've been running through and working on that I want to talk about. It's having an inspiring external women speaker program. It's joining all manner of external events like International Women's Day, Things like Ada Lovelace Day, too. It's about having support groups and celebrating and having prizes. So I want to tell you about what we do for International Women's Day. What we did, and I've, uh, I'm in the senior team that runs the university, so I have to do things on the, as cheap as I can. There's low budget to show that good example. So we put something together that was really celebratory and had a big impact, but was a low cost. We put a call out across the university and said, tell us about the women that inspire you, your students, some of your staff, the graduates, people that worked here a long time ago. And we celebrated, never mind International Women's Day, we did this for the whole month of March. And we actually do this now every year. So each week, there's 15 new profiles added. And this gets enormous attention. 
And it goes way beyond this region, and it's looked at a very long way. So very, very effective. I think some of you recognize some of the people uh, as well in the picture. Some of our real heroes there uh, to celebrate. So book science. This is about taking female sciences to the street scene. And this is about talking about your research. This is actually me standing on the south bank of London, drawing in people that were walking past, telling them about my microbiology research. And actually, as a result of this experience, I brought an established soapbox science to Swansea. And as a little plug, September 10th, we've got our third run through. Please uh, do come along. So where's our heroes then? We dug very deep here. And if you can think and relate it to your world and where you work and what you do, look back. This is Professor Mary Williams. So there's someone else I want to introduce you to. In 1920, so the University of Swansea just opened, in 1920, she was appointed as the first female professor in the UK. I didn't know that. Most of the staff and the students didn't know. Hey, we found a hero. So now, from nowhere, we've started to what I call, we make, we make stuff up. Because we've gone out, we found a hero, then we make a whole load of events around Mary Williams. We've set up a Mary Williams support group, networking group, so that women feel more connected in their career development. We've launched a Mary Williams Prize. Again, it was something I decided, I just I made it up. The vice chancellor didn't object. Uh, this is to support any colleague and recognize via a prize for any member of staff that supports equality and diversity. And now the graduation ceremony stops in July. The vice chancellor walks forward, introduces the prize winner and a thousand plus people in the room see that we're passionate about equality and diversity. I've recently launched a, a report that I did for the Welsh Government, co-authored by Karen Holford, a professor at Cardiff University, and there's recommendations there on education, recruitment, retention of how to get girls to STEM education and STEM careers too. So in terms then, I've covered some areas where we can look to bring about greater gender equity and the benefits of that. There's others as well. And some of these we're very proud that we've initiated across Wales. One of them is called the 5050 by 2020 that's been promoted by Quaritec. Now, this is about doing all that we can to ensure that women are, have equal representation in the senior teams of organizations. And at Swansea, we've gone from about 20% to almost 40% having talented women sitting on the university's governing body now. It's been a lot of work, but we've, we've got there. I, if, the women, if there aren't large numbers of women on senior committee, we look, can we co-opt some more on? Who's the talented women? Come on, learn from being as part of the committee structure as well. Raising awareness, getting people talking is a big part. The leadership must support this to get our buy-in uh, as well. Uh, demystifying the promotion process is one that we've worked very, very hard at. And it, it literally runs people through, what do you have to do to get promoted? And then suddenly, ah, it doesn't look so big and scary. I'll give that a go. And looking for how might the men help and support this? More often when I'm speaking to a big audience like this, it's the men that put the hands up saying, hey, I'm fully supporting. I'm right behind you. What can I do? So programs that help that too. So to wrap up, I want to now revisit Sophie's world. Okay. You've all got Sophies in your life. This is your daughters. It's your sisters. It's your mother, your partner. These are your Sophies. So that when I go to Sophie, my great niece, when I go to her party on Saturday, let's make change happen so that I can look at those boys and girls and really think that we're going to have created a world where they've got every opportunity to succeed, including in the STEM careers. Thank you.